The shepherds went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in a manger. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to our celebration of the Feast of the Holy Family. It's in the family where most of us learn what life's about. We learn the good, and sometimes we learn the bad in our families too, but they're the ones who bring us up. They're the ones who teach us the values in life. And so as we begin to celebrate this Mass, we think of the Holy Family, how they inspire us, how they are there as a model for us, Joseph with his obedient, quiet uh, presence, and our Blessed Lady with her nurturing, caring love, and Jesus who comes to redeem the world. So as we begin to celebrate this Mass, we call to mind our sins, asking the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. Lord, you wish to bless us with a holy life. Lord, have mercy. You seek our happiness always. Christ, have mercy. You call us in to, your, to hope in you. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. The Lord honours the father in his children and upholds the rights of a mother over her sons. Whoever respects his father is atoning for his sins. He who honours his mother is like someone amassing a fortune. Whoever respects his father will be happy with children of his own. He shall be heard on the day when he prays. Long life comes to him who honours his father. He who sets his mother at ease is showing obedience to the Lord. My son, support your father in his old age. Do not grieve him during his life. Even if his mind should fail him, show him sympathy. Do not despise him in your health and strength. For kindness to a father shall not be forgotten, but will serve as reparation for your sins. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm. O blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. O blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. O blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labour of your hands you shall eat. You will be happy and prosper. O blessed are those who fear Your wife like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. Your children like shoots of the olive around your table. O oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. O oh, blessed are those who fear the Lord. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. You are God's chosen race, his saints. He loves you and you should be clothed in sincere compassion, in kindness and humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with one another, forgive each other as soon as a quarrel begins. The Lord has forgiven you, now you must do the same. Over all these clothes, to keep them together and complete them, put on love. And may the peace of Christ reign in your hearts, because it is for this that you were called together as parts of one body. Always be thankful. Let the message of Christ, in all its richness, find a home with you. Trust each other and advise each other in all wisdom. With gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms and hymns and inspired songs to God. And never say or do anything except in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, give way to your husbands as you should in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and treat them with gentleness. Children, be obedient to your parents always, because that is what will please the Lord. Parents, never drive your children to resentment, or you will make them feel frustrated. The word of the Lord. We stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. May the peace of Christ reign in your hearts. Let the message of Christ find a home with you. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the day came for them to be purified as laid down by the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem and to present him to the Lord, observing what stands written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male must be consecrated to the Lord and also to offer in sacrifice in accordance with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now in Jerusalem there was a man named Simeon he was an upright and devout man. He looked forward to Israel's comforting and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had set eyes on the Christ of the Lord. Prompted by the Spirit, he came to the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the law required, he took him into his arms and blessed God and he said, Now, Master, you can let your servant go in peace, just as you promised, because my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared for all the nations to see, a light to enlighten the pagans and the glory of your people Israel. As the child's father and mother stood there, wondering at the things that were being said about him, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, them, his mother, you see this child, he is destined for the fall and for the rising of many in Israel, destined to be a sign that is rejected, and a sword will pierce your own soul too, so that the secrets of, secret, secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. There was a prophetess also, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was well on in years, her days of girlhood over, she had been married for seven years before becoming a widow. She was now 84 years old and never left the temple serving God night and day with fasting and prayer. She came by just at that moment and began to praise God. And she spoke of the child to all who looked forward to the deliverance of Jerusalem. When they had done everything the law of the Lord required, they went back to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. Meanwhile, the child grew to maturity and he was filled with wisdom and God's favor was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
The child's father and mother stood there wondering at the things that were being said about him. Perhaps one of the most poignant consequences of COVID-19 has been the inability of grandparents to be with their grandchildren and vice versa. This is made even more painful when the grandchild is newly born. The only contact, and most are grateful for this at least, is via Zoom or FaceTime or, or such, such like. Even then, after the first awful glimpse, most, I'm sure, could not help but comment something like this. Gosh, doesn't he have his father's eyes? And her smile, isn't it just like yours? And his nose is just like granddad's. And those hands are the spitting image of, of grandma's. We can't help but see so many of our family traits in the newborn. It's part of a universal conversation. As children grow up, we can identify not just their physical family resemblance, but also their personality traits, ways of speaking and expressing themselves, how they do things. Whether we like it or not, so much of what makes us the person that we are, we have inherited from our families, in particular from our parents and from our grandparents. Although we don't know very much about St. Joseph, the foster father of Jesus, we can presume that many of Jesus' personality traits and characteristics came from the interaction, his interaction, with Joseph. After all, it was Joseph who taught him his trade as a carpenter. Surely the way Jesus related to his divine father had to have been based on the way he related to his earthly foster father, the way he confidently spoke to the father and intently listened to him in prayer and trusted him even through the darkness and pain of the crucifixion. All that must surely have come from the way he spoke to Joseph and Joseph spoke to him. And if you notice in the scriptures, there are many situations that occur around the table in the context of a meal, not least the Last Supper, but there's also many more uh, examples. Again, it wouldn't be too fanciful to conclude that the table and meals must have been important events in the life of the Holy Family in Nazareth. Hence, Jesus' ease gathering with people in similar circumstances. The Father specifically chose Mary and Joseph to guide Jesus in discerning what is true and to experience the meaning of love. We know from scriptures and tradition that the condition of the family of Mary, Joseph and Jesus was not always ideal, at least from a human point of view. The timing and the location of his birth might have been different, scrambling around trying to find a place to stay as Mary was about to give birth, finding refuge in a cattle shed, having to escape from the murderous clutches of King Herod and going into exile as asylum seekers. And then from the sudden silence, we must presume that Joseph had died and Mary was left to bring up Jesus as a young teenager on her own. The constant care and protection, the example of faithfulness and respect displayed in his home must have rubbed off on Jesus and influenced the way he saw the world and the way he treated others. The point that I'm trying to make is that families, parents, grandparents especially have tremendous influence on their children and grandchildren. And it's more by example than anything else that this influence is taught and learned. What an awesome task. What an incredible responsibility. But like everything that the Lord asks us to do, he gives us the wherewithal and the help necessary. In this case, we have the example and inspiration of the Holy Family who lived in a similar reality to ours today. 
They are not the plaster cast figures that we sometimes see in church art. They had to live through the ups and downs of everyday life like us. And it was in that daily life that they taught and formed Jesus and cooperated in preparing him for the mission that his heavenly father was to give him. As we celebrate this beautiful feast of the Holy Family, we remember our families. We remember Christian families and families everywhere. Let us offer our prayers today, asking the Lord's strength and guidance, especially for all parents and grandparents, that they may influence their children and grandchildren for good, and that they may be assisted in their awesome task and responsibility. St. John Paul II wrote a letter of encouragement on the role of the family, which was called Familiaris Consortio. And towards the end, he prays, through God's mysterious design, it was in the Holy Family that the Son of God spent long years of a hidden life. And the Holy Family will not fail to help Christian families, indeed, all families in the world, to fulfill with joy the plan of God in their regard. St. Joseph was a just man, a tireless worker, the upright guardian of those entrusted to his care. May he always guard, protect, and enlighten families. May the Virgin Mary, who is the mother of the church, also be the mother of the church of the home. May Christ, the Lord, the universal King, the King of families, be present in every Christian home as he was at Cana, bestowing light, joy, serenity, and strength. And for all families, we pray, we humbly ask you, Lord, that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and in your peace. We stand now to profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We ask our Father to gather our many prayers into a greater unity. For the Pope, that he may share the wisdom entrusted to the Church with all the world. Lord, hear us. For all bishops, priests, and leaders in the church, that they may foster love in the church, and that the church may inspire the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For all families, that their light may shine to give light to the whole world. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For those who suffer in any way, that those who care for them may never lose sight of the eternal meaning of compassion. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. 
for all who have gone before us, that they may share in the joy of the kingdom. Lord, hear us. Now we pause for a moment to remember our own private and personal prayers. And we ask the prayers of Mary, the mother of the Holy Family and our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace. Blessed art thou, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, in a world that can so often seem cold, may we share warmth with the world by our prayers. We ask you to hear all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> we offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and in your peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this all-filled mystery, through, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in, joy and so, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, Holy. Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with Francis our Pope, me your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for, their, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, 
and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Saviour of this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all the saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you almighty God Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the altar, may receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant, uh, grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Ma Ma Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all the saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, from whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave light to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, for all my sins and for every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, and to never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Amen. Our God has appeared on the earth and lived among us. Especially for those at home, we make our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ.